I'm Stephen Foskett, and this is Tech Field Day. The video you're about to see brings together a panel of a dozen delegates from around the world who focus on enterprise technology to talk and learn about new technology products from companies like DriveScale. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can go to techfieldday.com. And if you like this video, you can see a lot more at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So you guys heard from Igneous yesterday. They stole some of my thunder with their <laughs> Ethernet-attached hard drives. Um, so you know they're, they're real, and they're getting more real. Um, Seagate obviously had, had their thing, and HGST is playing around with it. Um, I believe Igneous is using a uh, interposer type solution. Well, mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> There's his 32-bit uh, arm with gigabit interface. This guy is 64-bit arm, dual core, I believe 512 meg of memory, and dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So this is a high performance hard drive interposer. And it runs a full stock Ubuntu, which is not necessarily a good thing for, for a hard drive interposer. Um, so yeah, ethernet attached hard drives are, are getting real. And that, that's really the purpose of our box, is to Ethernet attach your, your hard drives. So we're, we're, we're very happy to see a movement towards that kind of thing. Um, Such so talked a lot about NVMe over fabrics. I was at the supercomputing show yesterday. Um, our buddies at Kazan Networks, along with New Isis, were demonstrating a single 2U box, 24 NVMe drives, 10 million IOPS. All right, so extreme performance. And there were four 100 gig it, uh, Ethernet interfaces coming into that box. So you just kind of mind numbing performances on, on the uh, horizon. Um, as things move towards Ethernet attached mods and boffs, we're happy to work with the hardware vendors. Uh, because of Satya, we know all the hardware vendors, and they, they love him because he used to buy all their stuff at the Cisco and Sun and wherever mm -hmm. else. Um, and that's really, such is also the reason we have a strong relationship with Foxconn, and so we have a lot of it, you know, intelligence from them about what's really going on in the server world because they make, they make the servers for pretty much everyone. Um, Yeah, so, so there's a lot going on with the hardware. We're a little startup. We're not building much hardware. We, got, we have our box. Hardware is very expensive to build, but, but you know, the, the invisible hand moves pretty predictably. We know what's coming out. Um, and similarly, the data path is moving all to hardware, so that, that's going to be happening. The real challenge is how do you manage all this stuff, all right? So it's hard enough to manage servers. What about pieces of servers? Yeah, my view is subservers should be subservient and, and do what they're told. Um, you, you, you've all heard the pets versus cattle analogy. Of, you know, your servers used to be pets. You, know, you gave them names, you loved them, you cried when they died. Um, now you treat them like cattle, that's great. Round them up, you still need cowboys. The cattle still wander off, and, <laughs> uh, and hopefully you have a large supply of dung beetles. <laughs> so my model is these these new things need to be manageable like cabbage, right? You plant them, they grow, and they're useful. You can eat them yourself, very very nutritional, even if they don't taste good, or you can feed them to the cattle. That's great. Or if you're kind of strange, you can. Keep one as a pet. <laughs> <laughs> so our mission is to manage this disaggregated data center um, and really <coughs> map, scale out applications to this strange new world of hardware where you know, the value is going to devolve to the component vendors, right? Intel, Seagate, you know, HGST, mm. Samsung with Flash, they're all building the units that you want to connect together. So why are you paying so much for sheet metal from the established system vendors? What we can do is essentially make it so 
you have virtual sheet metal. So redefine your components into whatever shape of servers you want. So we talked a lot about the, the rack. Rack is really just a convenient handle for the, the different domains that you have to worry about when you assemble your, your clusters. So primarily, the thing is what we call the bandwidth domain. You know, what, what is the exact switch connectivity? And it's important for you know, bandwidth, latency, and loca locality. So that you don't, and the locality, again, remains very important so that your overall bandwidth scales as you add racks. You, you, don't, you don't add check, uh, choke points anywhere like you would with a central storage system. Power domains you need to know about eventually so you know, you know how to spread a cluster across your data center. Other types of failure do domains might be there. You know, if, if the air conditioning goes out over there, you still want some of your cluster over here. And of course, these are all concerns that cloud applications have at a, at a larger scale where you want to have you know, parts of your application in different zones around the world. Um, so a lot of the the scale-out apps are becoming aware of that type of thing. Again, servers become just an abstraction of the components. They're all uh, mixed up anywhere you want them. So based on, on what you have where, we can map your cluster requirements to them. All these components uh, eventually become Ethernet attached, which is interesting because the Essentially, the only way to attach something to Ethernet is with an intelligent processor to manage the Ethernet. As far as I'm aware, there's never been any pure hardware Ethernet endpoints. There's been switches, but not endpoints. And the, the NVMe over Fabrics guys think, think they're going to do that, but they're in for a rude awakening when they have to plug into a network and not a fabric. Yeah. And what now... <coughs> Then the real interesting thing is, since there is Linux running on all these endpoints, there's the potential for doing computation on the endpoint. And that'll be important, you know, number one, to determine what kind of protocol interface. So we're not married to iSCSI, that's all in software. And similarly, the drive could be running iSCSI, it could be running an object thing. You know, who knows what the future, future might hold. And you can run some computation there especially searching and counting, which are really basis, basic uh, things about analytics, can, can vastly reduce the overall load on your system by distributing it out to the storage. So I have a vision of being able to actually or orchestrate all this shit, but of course it's a multi-year vision. So here's our wrapping up our core value propositions. Um, it's all about being simple. You saw th the GUI. I mean, that's really how things work, and you never have to deal with the iSCSI and the load balancer and the multipath. Um, it's all about getting rid of silos so that you have a single hardware infrastructure that can be retasked to whatever you want. Scale out. You know, it's essential. It's ultimately the old stuff is a subset of the new stuff. Any of those servers we talked about could be tasked to running you know, your VMware stuff, but that's not very interesting to, to try to displace those systems right now, but ultimately they will be displaced. And then it's optimization. So the workloads change all the time. Nobody ever has a clue what the, the resources re requirements are really going to be. And again, if you have resources locked into silos, it's very inefficient. And then uh, the elasticity we provide means that you can react to changing demand, provide new clusters for new applications without waiting for new hardware to arrive. <coughs>